Cowboys Nation, all my fellow Dallas Cowboys fans. This your boy, the real McCoy, coming at you with another video, man. I recently just did a video talking about um, whether or not the Cowboys should consider trading back or sh should they trade back in the draft. This video here, man, we're talking about the coaching staff. Uh, not necessarily the each position coach, even though uh, your position coaches are the backbone of your coaching staff, like you know, Derek Dooley, the wide receivers coach, or Leon Lett, the defensive line coach, things like that. I'm talking about the three guys who gets, you know, who get all the praise and uh, and the responsibility for whether you win or losing. Your two coordinators and mainly your head coach. Uh, Rod Marinelli, our defensive coordinator. Scott Linehan, offensive coordinator, play calling, and, and coach Jason Garrett. And uh, I'm seeing watching the Super Bowl, and I'm like, you know, Dan Quinn, and this is only his second year coaching the Atlanta Falcons, his second year. And they won the NFC Conference. They won the NFC. Should have won the Super Bowl clock management they should have ran the ball and things like that but anyway i'm thinking like his second you're like why can't coach gary do that now i know you know I mean, why are you knocking coach gary he just won coach of the year and i get it i get that and someone might say well, no coach dan quinn came into a good situation you got a, a franchise quarterback an all pro receiver but coach gary had tony romo and des bryant you no know, now you got dak and z best offensive line in football the most accurate kicker and dan bailey you know so I'm not knocking Coach. I mean, I've always said this when it comes to Coach Garrett. I like Coach Garrett, but I don't love Coach Garrett. He hasn't, he hasn't shown enough for me. To, you know what I mean? I, I, I need more. I mean, we should have, at a minimum, played in one championship game under Coach Garrett. At least one. The talent is there. Haven't done that yet. You know, but um, we look at Coach Rob Marinelli. We all love Marinelli. I mean, he has a lack, a lackluster defense lack of talent no big name guys you know in um 2014 we went 12 and 4 this year i think we were top five in total team sacks uh number one in the league as far as stopping the run we finished top five in points per game giving up under 19 you know and this is a team that lacks talent on defense it's, it's mainly coach marinelli you know but there are some some question marks with him and you know with him is it's it's his philosophy the, the type of players that he want, he wants the the go hard guys, guys who are gonna give him everything they, that they have, high motor type of guys. You know, he seems to rather have, he seems to rather want those guys more so than guys who actually have talent. You know, maybe his philosophy needs to change. Go draft a guy with talent, and you deal with his ego. You know what I mean? Things like that. I mean, it comes with it sometimes. You know, you sometimes you got to deal with that. You know. And as far as on the field play, he sometimes he gets too conservative. Uh, off the top of my head, this I remember we played the Cleveland. Now we blew the Cleveland Browns out. We beat the Cleveland Browns, but the score was twenty-one to three. Right before the half, Marinelli went totally conservative, and the Browns went right down the field and scored a touchdown to Terrell Pryor. Made the twenty-one ten. That was the last time they scored, but he went totally conservative in the playoff game. How how were we able to slow down Aaron Rodgers in the in the, in the Packers offense? We blitzed them. We got pressure on them. Made them make have to make quick decisions, things like that. We were able to slow them down, let our offense get back, get a rhythm, and get back in the game. But then the last two drives when they drove down, kicked the field goal, made it 31 28, and then kicked the game winning field goal. He played the 3 2 6 defense, basically the dime defense, but he only rushed three, basically. He went conservative. I mean, great, great quarterbacks are going to pick you apart because at some point they're going to find an open receiver in the zone. No doubt about it. You know, so is it a philosophy change he needs to deal with? Does it needs to be a little bit more aggressive with the co uh, with the coaching as far as on the field? And then Scott Linehan about I mean, I, I've spoken on this numerous times, man. About ninety seven percent of the time, ninety seven percent, he does a great job calling plays. No doubt, Linehan. That three percent though. It's like, what are you doing? And I spoke on it numerous times, man. Week 15 against the uh, at, at the time the Red Hot Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Sunday Night Football. Zeke rushed for over 150 yards rushing, but he decides to try and be cute, run a reverse. The handoff against botched, and I think that, was it. A, I think it was, a, was it a turnover or we just lost yards. Later on in the game, he tried to run a jet sweep. We went from first and ten. He tried to run the jet sweep with Lucky Whitehead, and now we're second and 18. Like, why? Just give the ball to Zeke. You know, in the playoff game against the Green Bay Packers, 
Zeke had 125 rushing yards. 125. Come, average almost six yards a carry. He runs the ball on first down. Gets nine yards. Any offense in the history of the NFL would take nine yards on first down. First, go from first and ten to second and one, I'll take it. That's what Zeke did, I believe. In the next play, we try to throw a screen, get cute again. And, you know, Dez wasn't expecting Michael Hyde from the Packers to jump inside and intercept it. Thank God Jeff Heath picked off Aaron Rodgers, but why give the ball to Zeke? You know what I mean? It's it's frustrating. Then Coach Gary, you know, with with him going back to Zeke once again, week 16 against the Lions, Zeke basically didn't even play in the second half. He didn't play week 17 against the Eagles. We had the wild card weekend by week. So that's basically two and a half weeks Zeke had to rest. Then in the playoff game, he only has 22 carries. Now, I get it. We were down. We were trying to pass, you know, get back in the game. But only 22. Why rest him if you're not going to play him in the playoffs? You know, Zeke was the, probably the most underutilized superstar in the NFL. Zeke is a superstar. You know what I mean? He, Zeke is probably going to be my favorite for MVP next year. He might get 2,000 rushing yards. Now he's got that experience under his belt. Let's limit down the road. But he's the most underutilized superstar in the league this year, in my opinion. Look at what David Johnson did with the Cardinals. Le'Veon Bell. It's like they, they haven't figured out, this coaching staff really hasn't figured out a way to use Zeke, to use Lance Dunbar, Lucky Whitehead. We got these guys with all this speed. They, this, they, haven't, they don't know how to use them. But Coach Garrett, that first quarter, we got a call timeout in a playoff game. And I spoke on this already. Because Aaron Rodgers is hurrying up. I mean, we, we had the bye week. When we had the bye week, we knew we were going to play one of three teams. The Detroit Lions, if they beat Seattle on the road, and the winner of the Packers-Giants game. Guess what? We played all three of those teams in the regular season. You go back, you study the tape. Once we learned that we were going to play the Packers, you got a week to prepare for Aaron Rodgers hurrying up to the um, to the huddle so you don't have time to substitute. He wasn't prepared for it. We got to call timeout. We could have used that timeout right before the half. We, I mean, just he's not prepared. Coach Gary just wasn't prepared. Then we had a, like a big 25, 30-yard uh, passing gun play to Terrence Williams gets called back. Bryce Butler, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, coming into the huddle but don't participate in the play. Some of that's Bryce Butler, but some of that I blame the coaching. Linehan, Dooley, Coach Gary, you got to know your personnel. You got to know who me. That's coaching, man. You got to be prepared, man. Then the Green Bay Packers, they kick the field goal. They go up by three, 31 to 28. We're driving down the field. And he tells that Prescott to spike the ball. To go for the touchdown. Don't just settle for going to overtime. Why? Because field goals get you beat. And sure enough, we lost by a field goal. I mean, it's, it's things like that. I mean, I know I know Garrett just won coach of the year. You know what I mean? So why are you knocking? He won coach of the year. But those are things in the 2017 season. You know, those are going to be things I'm, I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for improvement. I mean, in my video I did, off-season priorities, coaching improvement was one of them priorities, man. We got to improve. You know, at a bare minimum, the Dallas Cowboys need to be in a championship game. And barring any significant end, though, Dak gets hurt. Zeke gets hurt. Dez gets hurt. Tyron Smith left. You know what I mean? Barring any crazy significant injuries, I expect the Dallas Cowboys to be in a championship game next year. No doubt. Our offense can win a Super Bowl this year. We could have won a Super Bowl with the offense we had. No doubt. You know? And if we don't get there, one of these three guys got to go, in my opinion. But one of them has to go. You know, um, who will it be? I mean, Coach Garrett can argue, look, I just won Coach of the Year. I need, you know what I mean? We, we can't, this can't continue. I, I need to see improvement, man. I just want to do a quick video on it, man, because I've just seen the Atlanta Falcons and Dan Quinn win the NFC his second year there. As a coach, they won the NFC. I mean, Co Coach Garrett, what's going on? Let me know what you guys think about that, man. Uh, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, all that good stuff, man. I just personally want to talk about it here on my channel. After, right after watching the Super Bowl. Let me know what you guys think about it, man. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, all that good stuff, Cowboys Nation. This your boy, The Real McCoy, man. It's a little frustrating. It is. I ain't going to lie. It's a little frustrating. But I believe. I, I believe. But I, I need to see it. This your boy, The Real McCoy, Cowboys Nation, man. I'm out, man. Peace.